Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to Farthest Frontier. This game is an incredible, brutal, difficult, challenging, hardcore survival city builder with invasions and raiding parties and disease and challenges of not only just nature, but of humankind as well. It's good to see you here for what we're going to call our first episode in a new series. After playing it and just taking a first look at it, and after live streaming a bit on the channel, which by the way, I have some giveaway keys for this game as well. So it'll be a subscriber only perk, so make sure you click or tap that subscribe button and jump on our Discord so I can do some giveaways for you all. This will come out for everyone on August 9th, 2022. And until then, you can win it by simply smashing the like button, saying hi down below in the comment section, subscribing, and of course, jumping on the Discord. All for good luck. Well, thank you everybody for being here. We're gonna get started with kind of a tutorial on things that I've learned for mid-game that'll help you all for early game and start a multi-part series for those of you who prefer shorter videos on building our first permanent settlement in Farthest Frontier, at least in a video series. We're gonna start a new settlement here today. There's uh, difficulty settings for pioneers, trailblazers, and vanquishers, which basically kind of changes your starting resources and uh, ability to resist hostile forces. Essentially, it's a way to counteract other settings that you could do under advanced settings. So for example, you could make it incredibly difficult for raiders to attack you, but also you could give yourself a ton of extra materials to prepare for their invasion. In this case, we're gonna go down middle of the road for Trailblazer. You can also see your map seat up at the top, so you can share that with a friend. And we can name our city here too. So we'll go back to basic, we'll select Trailblazer. We'll build the city of New Raptoria. We'll make that a large map, and we'll select some terrain. We have Lowland Lakes, which is very good for an easy early start. And it also has a lot of flat land around the lake. So that's something to consider. Although the lake could be a very large lake and take up some of the land, a lot of the land, giving you some to remain. That's going to be the challenge of this game. So we have lowland lakes that basically give us a big lake, but a lot of flat land and a lot of good prairie and such around in order to make farms. We have the plains, which is essentially the same, just with a lot less water. And so thus it's a lot harder to get food from farms and more viable for orchards. We have alpine valleys, which are large, beautiful mountains with maybe a lake in the middle, a lot of predators there too, wolves and bears. Oh yes, you'll have to defend against those as well. And the arid highlands, which is the most challenging with dry conditions, really no water at all, and uh, but rich in mineral deposits. So you have a lot of opportunity for exports of late game items that will really help you to thrive. So without further ado, oh, and by the way, one last mention of the pacifist mode. For those of you who do not want to be invaded and want to learn easily, there's the pacifist mode, which will turn off raiding parties and massive invasions that will come. Yes, the enemy will bring heavily armored troops and rams. So building those walls actually really matters, especially late game. It'll take a very long time before you even need to build towers, but you'll need to make sure you're able to pay your military in order to defend you. So you got to make sure that economy is strong. All right, let's go ahead and begin Farthest Frontier. Life can be harsh everywhere, but in the old world, there was no hope of it ever improving. When our crops failed, the ruling class would still collect the same share, leaving our children to starve. And if we had any coin to our name, the taxman would appear, demanding it for the crown. The nobles hid behind the safety of their walls and did nothing when raiders pillaged the outskirts of the city. And so, some of us decided that it was time to leave, that we'd rather take our chances in the wilderness, seeking the promise of a new land, than starve to death in our homeland. The journey wasn't easy. We lost many along the way. But this wild, unsettled land offers us the hope of a new start as the masters of our own destiny. And here 
we are. You can see our settlers coming out of the woods there after exploring. We've finished scouting the surrounding area. Survey the land your villagers have explored and choose a promising site to construct your town center. It's important to choose a location that's near resources that you'll need to build a successful settlement. Things like clay, iron ore, and potential food sources. All right, well, in this mode, we now have an unlimited amount of time to look around and survey our lands before we build our permanent settlement. Here we can see a really nice lake over on the edge of the map, which is great. It means we can build all behind it. We have another lake over here, too, with fish sources. You can see that in blue. And a lot of these icons you'll have to learn over time of just doing. But essentially, you want to build where the most amount of green is, at least for starting, but of course near a source of water, too, in order to keep your people hydrated. Otherwise, of course, they'll end up with things like, for example, dehydration, or in some cases even dysentery, because they won't be able to uh, clean themselves and whatnot, and also fire protection. Well, this seems like a really good spot to get started. This is the large size of the largest map, and I believe we could explore past this as well. Although once we put down our town center, we won't be able to expand without exploring that area again. So that's a little weird game mechanic, but it does make sense. This is an extremely dangerous area here. We have two wolf dens right here. So by scouting, we know that if we push to what we'll call the north, which is far away from the lake, there are deer over here, which is great. But there's also two wolf dens, which is incredibly dangerous, incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Uh, we have a lot of open areas here. This is great for fertility for farms. And this is also pretty good, too, for orchards and some farms as well. So the more dark green an area is, the more fertile it is. And, of course, mountains here with lots of iron. Look at those iron deposits. Beautiful, with perhaps some coal around as well. There's a lot of eggs here, uh, fish here. We want to find a natural food source as well, something that we can hunt. There's actually two fishing spots there. And it looks like there's deer here. That's perfect. So we could probably build our town here. Oh, and there's deer here as well. Fantastic. Not as much as over there, but this would be a perfect spot to get started. Plus, there's lots of land here to build in too, and fertile land up here for farming next to the lake. I think we found our spot. That's going to be perfect. All right, so keep in mind that this game is very similar in many ways to Anno uh, 1800 and or any of the Anno series with a lot of banished sprinkled in here and of course some elements of perhaps dawn of man with the whole defense building now if we build our town at this moment uh, we need to consider that the enemy could possibly arrive off map and also that they won't attack from the water so if we build defenses it'll have to be a crescent moon shape around here and we can first defend the town and then ignore things like farm fields and whatnot <clears throat> oh boy a predator's been sighted and a villager's under attack uh that shouldn't be happening Well, anyway, time is paused in this case. We should be all right. We're going to go ahead and build our town center over here then so we can actually connect it. But as I was mentioning then, uh, we'll be invaded and attacked and we'll have to be prepared for those types of things, including all the diseases and whatnot, which may come our way. Let's go ahead and build here then and we'll place this down and our villages will come on, villagers will come on over. All right. We have 12 villagers to start with, so whomever was attacked is okay but that should be kind of a pause free mode where you can take all the time in the world to build all right first and foremost we have our little wagon here our storage cart which acts as a mobile warehouse it comes with a few items to start with like tools and weapons here we have some bows and arrows so once we build a hunting shack they can get their materials from here and all their future ammunition so we're going to go ahead and move the uh, wagon probably up here where we'll start cutting down trees shortly and then of course all of our villagers can put the wood inside the wagon and whenever they need uh, wood in order to build houses or whatnot, they can go there. So look at that. Just a wonderful looking game. I am blown away with how detailed and lush the grass and the landscape looks. Uh, you'll see pollen and leaves and such blowing around during the spring and the uh, summer. And then you'll see even more leaves and snow blow around in the winter. There are challenges such as in Frostpunk where special events can happen. Where, uh, we again, we can have a disease outbreak. We can have raiders come in. We can have... Uh, like, for example, a fire breakout, invasion, attacks. Uh, the AI, as I was trying to mention earlier, will go straight for your storage areas. They won't wander around your town randomly just killing everybody and burning stuff down, although they can. They typically like to go where you've put your biggest storage, things for, like, your gold storage or uh, certain materials that will sell for a lot more, such as, um, you know, shoes and barrels and things like that that go for a lot of money. We're going to tell our people now to start cutting down trees around the village so we can clear it for future building. And, of course, 
for all the resources we'll need to build a town. So we're going to go ahead and try to tell them to cut down anything and everything around here uh, so we can get some logs going for firewood and for building homes. Our fir number one first goal is homes. Firewood's important, but it won't be until a little later. And time in this game works very quickly. As you can see, it's already mid-spring, and very soon it'll be mid-summer, so we need to at least have a, a firewood cutter up by then. We can't build any homes until the town center is complete, according to the building list, so if we go to housing, it's locked until we've built the town center. So as we're building that, it's a good opportunity for us to look around at resources that are around and also to build roads in order to uh, start laying out the town. And, uh, of course, building buildings close together is a really good idea, especially residential buildings. You'd think, oh, that's not great for disease, and that's not great for fire, and you'd be right. Except if you're building next to a, uh, a lake or a well, your people will be able to put out the fire very quickly before it spreads to other buildings. And also, it's much easier to work on things like, for example, desirability, in which building next to a uh, healer's hut or a school or a park will give your people a uh, desirability boost, which it helps them to increase the level of their homes. Homes in this game kind of work like they do in Pharaoh or Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom, a Sierra city builder game, or like how it is in Anno, where the more things you supply to your people, then they can automatically upgrade their home. So if your people are looking to uh, you know, upgrade their home, they can do it automatically without you having to build a new building. You will have to hit the button for it, but... Um, of course, they will tell you when they have all the things met to do that. All right, right now it looks like there's only uh, 10 labor hours needed to complete the town center. So they're going to get uh, started on that. And there's also 18 required wood remaining. So everything is being uh, put into place. And we should be ready to go on to housing right about now. Fantastic. The town center is complete. And now we can build a little bit further away from it as well. Okay, well, speaking of wells, we'll get that down as soon as we've finished a few homes. I like to start with like three homes, and then uh, I like to continue uh, to build homes after they've completed those. So do like three homes, then a well, and then three more. They take time to build, so our people will be patient and understand. There's light terraforming in this game. There's also uh, the ability to build farms in this game, and farming in this game works wonderfully. I'm blown away at how the farming in this game works. It is amazing. You actually have to worry about crop rotation, which is something that appears in other games such as Ostrieve. You have to worry about soil types such as clay or sandy soil. You have to worry about removing weeds. You have to worry about uh, removing rocks. And you also have to worry about fertility too, which you can increase by creating a building known as the Night Soilman, which essentially takes human fecal matter from your village and uses it on the farms as fertilizer. And it is a requirement to build that building as, of course, nobody wants that anywhere near their home. So essentially the person comes out to clean out outhouses that everybody has at their own home. Look at that. They're getting ready, cleaning all these uh, trees out of the way. Nobody's happy right now, very miserable, as there's no homes at the moment. But don't worry, they're getting cracking at building those homes rather quickly. So very proud of everybody. What we're going to do here is we're probably going to build a neighborhood that goes down around like this, kind of like a, um, a, a circle. And essentially what we'll do is we'll put all the city services in the middle so the area of effect around it uh, positively affects all this, the houses around it as well in a circle around that. We're going to also start building food buildings here shortly to gather things like eggs from birds and berries and whatnot. A forager should be used rather early as well as a fishing dock. We can move their work areas, so don't worry about that. And frequently pausing by hitting space is a great idea too, especially if you're looking into the details of something. So in this game, if you're ever going to be taking a second away from building, make sure you pause. So if you're wondering, oh, where is the, where do I find the uh, foundry? Well, there you go. The buildings in this game also work in tiers by upgrading the town hall. So it won't be until a very long while until we can make iron ingots at tier three. So you'll have to really slowly build up your economy and your population before you're allowed to do that. So keep in mind, some things will take a little while. Wow, look at that, a water bonus over here of a very high amount for our well. Let's build a road down here, and we'll build the well down here as, as well. And uh, we'll probably build some of our initial farm fields down here, including uh, some storage areas for them, and we'll keep the wagon around there. Let's try to get advantage of that, like, almost darn near 100% on that water bonus. Looks like it only goes to 99. So that's about as high as it's going to be. People will have to walk a little bit for the water, but this is not too far. Some of the things in these games is learning the nuances of how far is far, how expensive is expensive, that type of thing. So 
Playing time and time again will get you better and better. I don't know about all of you, but I certainly do like to start over in games multiple times once I've learned some of the basics and apply it to an even better design each and every time that I do it. We'll build our forger out here too. There's lots of berries. Berries can only be gathered as many other items in certain seasons. So for example, berries are plentiful in spring and summer, and then mushrooms are in uh, late summer and early autumn, and also nuts and such too. So that's something that you'll have to consider when building your forger. The forger can also gather things from medicine and from making baskets, which also increases your people's ability to carry items. And there's also wagons and things we can build later on. So there's ways where we can essentially <clears throat> increase the productivity of our town just by simply building a few other buildings and taking advantage of basic resources around us, such as, uh, well, of course, all the different type of straw, quote unquote, in order to make baskets for storage. So there's lots of options for that. All right, happiness is increasing as we get more and more people in buildings. Now they've gone from a negative debuff to a, a kind of a positive outlook now on life. Their basic needs are very basic, just water and food, and they'll be all right. But for these town ho homes to upgrade, we'll have to have our town home, our town hall to level two, so the homes can be upgraded to level two by providing them with two types of food at all times. And that basically means that you can't give them fish and meat. You have to give them fish and like vegetables. Like for example, two proteins doesn't count as two types of foods. So your people have very simple requests, but those requests can be hard to meet. All right, this is telling us about harvesting resources to which there's a few details here on how to do it. Over here in these uh, options, we can uh, turn on and off certain uh, harvesting. So we can tell everyone to go gather berries, but we'll probably leave it to a forager after we've gathered some of the basics. We'll have somebody go out and gather berries. Oh, actually bushes. Uh, that will give us, I think, plant fibers for certain types of construction. We're going to go with berries here, though, if we can. Yep, looks like they're good to go there. Perfect. We can also clear resources. If, we, if there's something in the way we want out of there, like, for example, if we have way too much wood and we just need to clear an area, we can tell them to just clear it and dispose of the wood. But it's always a good idea to have more things in storage than you actually need. So keep that in mind to keep on... Keep it on with the storage. Everything will be used eventually, so it's always a good idea to have much more than what you need. Another great thing in this game is though it is grid-based, there is the ability to make curved roads. So you can make curved roads, diagonal roads. You can pretty much make roads free in any direction, and you can also make like long winding curves around mountains and around things that you don't want to uh, build a road over, such as over here we have clay, so it might be a nice idea to build a curved road towards the clay to make room for a farm field that might go down here for example. All right, it's time to start making firewood. More people await word to join your settlement. Amass a four-month supply of food and six houses. All right, we're building those six houses now, and we'll need to gather food. So actually, in addition to that, let's build a fishing shack. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is we could build two fishing shacks close together. And we can tell our villagers to go over here and explore a little bit, because we do know from kind of taking our time and looking around a little bit that there was fishing up here, and I believe deer up here as well. And we've scared off the deer by building our town here, but there wasn't too many. All the resources were over here. So I think what we'll do is we'll build our forger and fishing huts here, and the people will walk to the uh, shoreline in order to fish or gather berries. They can go to the source, so that's good. Well, let's build our first resource building. And then we'll get on fishing and a few other things. So the firewood splitter under resources will be needed. And it'll also lower durabil uh, desirability of your town. So kind of build it outside of town. You might want to build it where you'll be doing a lot of logging. And in this case, I think we're probably going to be doing some logging up here. And we'll also have to build a stockpile for those resources. So I'm going to build a little bit of a road over here too. For our people to take to get to the fishing hole. And also to get to more of the industries that I'd like to build over there. So yeah, we'll keep all of this for farming, and we'll keep some of this for storage, and all this will be for housing down here. Things are going pretty well. You can see some of them want water, and uh, once you build your well too, the well will take a little bit of time to fill up with water. So once you've built your well, it's not problem solved. It does take a little bit of time to solve that problem. We're going to gather stones now. That's one of the things needed for the well, so we're going to continue to expand our town by gathering more of those basic resources. All right, good. Now, iron can be found just underground too or in the mountainsides. If we see any of these resources we want, like clay, for example, it might be a good idea for us not to build on top of those. So we'll have to change our 
city design based on what we might need in the future. Farming in this game, I can't believe it. It works so wonderfully. I need to bring the whole video to a pause just to explain this. So this is going to be very helpful. I'll do a separate video on this as well to explain some things. But essentially, farming works like this. The minimum field size that we can build is 5x5, five five, and once the field is designated to be constructed, one person will come out to clear all the bushes, all the stumps, all the trees, and all the uh, land in order to be cultivated, and then farming can begin. That can take the course of about an entire year in this game. So, if we build a farm field, we need to kind of pay attention to a few things for fertility, although, that you know, we have to take what we can get. Try to get it as close to maybe uh, 60 or 70% as we can, and then we can start farming, and uh, we'll probably build over here. We can also adjust the soil mixture by bringing over clay and sand ourselves. So if this is not the best ideal amount of soil, or the type of soil, which this is very, very heavy with clay, we can adjust that by bringing over sand and mining it out later. A building, for example, to gather sand that would be used for the glass maker can also be used to modify your farms, and it's the same with the clay pit, so we'll probably build our farms all the way over here instead, and we'll keep this for storage and some other industrial production buildings. So let's go ahead and get started on explaining the farms a little bit more. We'll build a road over there, uh, once we build the farm, actually. So let's do a 5x5, five five, and it's a good idea to have multiple farms, so that way you can have different types of crops growing at the same time. You can do crop rotation, and you can typically do a summer crop and an and a autumn crop, or really, like, you can plant one in the spring, and you can plant one in the summer to be harvested in the summer and fall. So you can do like peas in the spring and then harvest them in the summer. And then you can do wheat for the autumn. And that's a really good thing. So let's go ahead and make an easy 5x5 five five here if we can. And you can see there that it's going to take 1,100 labor to build that. It's going to be a very long time until we see these farm fields. So check this out. We're going to actually build two right off the bat. And it'll be a little while until they're ready. So we'll just build a... Um, a road over here. Now one thing that I think uh, that doesn't change is based on where we build it, I don't think there's any sort of time reduction for that. Like for example, if we build in a heavily forested area, it might take more time, but I don't think there's a time, there's a way to reduce that time. So we'll have to wait for some trees to be cleared. So you, as you can see, this one can be uh, cleared by a construction worker for the trees, but the farm itself has to be built by the farmer. So in other words, there is two tiers to it. Clearing trees, so if we build it here, all the trees will first have to be cut down. Then the field can be cultivated, or in this case, there's no trees, and the field can just be cultivated right away. So in other words, this one will be complete before this one, even if they start at the same time, because there's one more task. All right, we'll revisit that a little bit later. It's a very exciting thing. I love how they've done farming in this game. It's really just... It's hands-on, and it's complicated. We have a predator spotted... We're going to have a, an attack in the town. All right, we have a wolf going to attack one of our people here. A great idea to immediately pause your game and prepare to defend your people. All right, here's all the people around the town. Here's one way that I found that it's easy to uh, basically eliminate wolves. Bears are a different story, but wolves can definitely one-on-one -on -one people and probably two and three on one people. So wolves are incredibly dangerous. So in this case, somebody's attracted the attention of a, a, attention of a wolf. We're going to run. We're going to run towards the road and we're going to lure the wolf into an ambush. The wolf will try to attack this person, and they might get a couple of hits in, maybe. But we're essentially going to buy time for this person to, uh... Yeah. To lure them right into the wolf. Perfect. So our people have been, uh, successful in killing a predator. Excellent work. Uh, if our people die, we can immediately build graveyards at the start. They're kind of built like how the farm fields are built, so you might want to build one of those early, but death is rather uncommon in this game, so long as you've done a few of the things uh, that you've needed to do. All right, we're building the forger shack. We need to continue to cut down trees. Things will take a little bit more time here. And let's also build our log splitter here, firewood splitter. And then we'll also build another building that we might need if we can. Let's see here, storage. We'll have to construct the uh, stockyard, which is where uh, area where uh, logs, stone, and planks can be stored, so that's a good idea to put that up here since we'll be doing logging and eventually woodworking up here as well. We'll put that right here on the corner. Looks nice. Good building for the corner like that. And that's all of our people's need for now is firewood. It is now midsummer, so uh, essentially logging in this game works by clearing out land too. You could build a building called the... Um, 
let's see, where is it? The work camp. The work camp can clear stone and can clear logs, but there's not a forester building. There's not a building that can go and cut down trees full time and bring those trees back to uh, store logs and then those logs brought to planks. You'll have to have laborers continuously do that and you'll have to continuously carve into the land. So you'll need to be very smart with how you do that. The work camp will just help you to keep up with demand of stone and demand of trees. I don't think there's a stone quarry, but there is clay, iron, gold, and coal mines. So eventually we'll probably clear more and more of this land out here for building our town and up here for building materials and such needed for expanding the town. All right, everyone's coming over, clearing out some areas and building. Very good. We're giving the order to cut down more trees, too. And the forger is up. The forger will need firewood. All of our buildings will need firewood to function. Thank goodness uh, Tom Cruise from The Last Samurai is working here. Very good. Seven people have arrived at your village. They have plans to immigrate. Will you accept them or turn them away? Well, welcome to Raptoria. Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section as we accept seven new people in the town, bringing the population up to 19 out of 24. Food stocks are low here, but that's okay. We'll have a lot more people now to work on all the jobs to gather food. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, one of the good things about this is at the bottom, you can see all the resources that'll be selected from dragging around. So you can see that we'll gather mushrooms or medicinal herbs or roots and such. So it's probably gonna be a best idea to build it like maybe somewhere over here. There we go, perfect. That's gonna be a good spot for the forger. All right, let's build a hunting shack and let's build a fishing dock too. We'll build a fishing shack nearby for all of our food production. <laughs> and you can see the deer right here as well, uh, but there's an even better spot over there. So uh, yeah, unfortunately nature's gonna have to make way because of the valuable flat land here. So the deer are gonna have to migrate somewhere else. All right, fishing shack there. Now, another cool thing about this game is that the deer will actually, as you can see them right here, will actually wander over to the farms, especially if you build close enough, and they will actually eat your crops. So at a certain point, probably not at the beginning, but after a while, it's a good idea to build a fence around your farms. So you can build like, for example, maybe a two by two farm. You can build a five by five, five by five, and then do that above. So you can do like a two by two for farms made of a five by five layout. And then you can put a, a fence around that to protect it from predators or at least uh, I guess uh, wildlife from eating it it's also another good way to lure them over and uh, have a hunting area around those farms to protect them sure you'll lose out on maybe 20 30 40 flax but you'll gain yourself three or four deer kills which could also be worth it additionally you will need to build farm fields in order to or rather pastures to protect your cows and cattle and such from predators as well they can wander over just as much as the um, deer can in order to wreak havoc on your uh, livestock as it would your uh, crops. All right, let's go ahead and build a, a hunting cabin here. I guess the, the deer really don't mind us building close by. They're actually in a great spot, so it worked out. We have two places to build a, a, a hunting cabin then, so that's great. Now, one thing we want to build in order to preserve that meat as much as possible, not only the fish, but also the a venison that we're about to get is the smokehouse but keep in mind again another undesirable building so we want to build it somewhere kind of further away from where we're going to be putting our town we can put it near a storage area but we can build some more industrial buildings up here given the layout of the land a bustling market would help generate gold and attract new settlers to our growing town market stocks houses and generate gold based on the number of houses in the work area yes the market will provide firewood and food to your people i've noticed that the Market seems to only provide people with food and also firewood, but not anything else. So it's, uh, yeah, you won't be able to sell, like, for example, clothing there and whatnot. It seems like it's just provided to your people uh, for free, so that way they don't die, which is good for us, because uh, we'd rather have them helping farming or fishing rather than dying to death. There's a carcass over here, too, from that wolf we fought earlier. We can have a hunter go over there and claim that pelt and also the food from that, so that's a good thing. We're continuously buy, uh, building more stuff here. All right, our people have a lot to do, and they're starting to use a lot of those logs, too. So let's just kind of let everybody work. There is villager pro uh, professions here, just like how it is in Banished. So keep in mind that we do want a good number of laborers to always be free. Somewhere around 8 to 12 is a good number of that, and we start with four construction 
personnel too so they can start doing all the uh, building whenever we order it otherwise i think they fall back into the laborer role oh we got another predator hold on a second we got an attack coming in oh another wolf would you look at that all right we got somebody running anybody nearby Ooh, it's relatively abandoned here okay and let's go ahead and see if we can get anybody to help out with that wolf and we'll have our good friend here, Dala, start booking it. Go, Dala. Now, movement speeds on the roads are actually increased here. And roads can be upgraded to also be cobblestone. Look at her hauling ass now. Yeah. So it's a great idea to build roads and, of course, to upgrade roads, too. So that way you can increase the speed of which your people will deliver goods and whatnot. So another good win for us. All of our people protected. Happiness is skyrocketing. Look at that 100% happiness. They couldn't be happier. They could also be dead if we're not careful with the firewood, so we're still working on that. Still gathering trees for our people to uh, make all that firewood. Landscape is just so gorgeous. The trees will grow back in this game, but the stone won't, so eventually we'll have to start trading for materials that we need. And If we slow down on our cutting of, um, of trees and stuff and, and making it into firewood, we can save a lot of our landscape. It's also another good idea in this game to try to preserve as many trees as possible because the trees will actually ooh lightning striking the trees will actually help to uh, preserve the water underneath the uh, underneath the ground so it'll prevent the groundwater from drying up so you do want to keep some forests nearby or at least uh, build near a lake so that way you can continuously get water in this case building here for our well was probably better than us actually building over here near the lake interestingly enough so you can see water filling up in the well. Right now it's at 60, then 61. We can also upgrade the well to produce more water too. Looks like our fishing hut is complete. Let's go ahead and get that designated to go fishing uh, somewhere nearby. We could have them go down here for now. A little bit of a walk, but uh, better than building it in and next to the town. Looks like we'll need to build a hunter too. And we'll build that smoking area too for the smokehouse. Yeah, we don't have much stone for that yet. We'll have to kind of build that. Uh, let's see. Somewhere over here, maybe. Um, boy. Yeah, we're going to have to build some nasty stuff far out of town. Like, for example, that night soil stuff for fertilizer. Oh, boy. Well, I guess we could build the smoker somewhere nearby. I don't want to really put it near the water down here, but uh, we may not have any other choice. I don't want to build near the deer habitat, so we'll kind of build over here next to our forger building. There we are. It doesn't affect desirability too much. People don't like the smoke, but they probably certainly do like the smell. I mean, you know, it's, bar it's barbecue essentially, so uh, yeah. Not quite, but you get it. Let's go ahead and add ourselves a hunter's tent now, a hunter cabin. We'll probably build two of these, and we could probably build them like this. We could actually build them back here like this. There we go. And we'll apply another worker to our firewood splitter so we can double down on the production. So we can go up to two on that. We can upgrade all the buildings in this game, it seems. It can be upgraded to like a tier two. You just need prerequisites and materials to do it. So just kind of keep them, um, an eye on what they need uh, to do that. All right, food stocks are reported as low. We're okay, though. We are okay. Uh, we only have a three-month supply, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it should do, and our people uh, will continue to gather stuff until winter. And we've got our hunting cabins going up, so we can take from those two different deer sources. Our people can eat raw meat and cook it at home, or, or smoked meat, too, after it's built at the processor. The smokehouse. Man, I just love this game so much. I really like how the buildings are not necessarily from one specific, um, you know, culture or whatnot. They're all just, they all just seem like any culture could have built these homes, especially at the start. They're only made from, like, for example, thatch, and there's daub between the logs. Great detail on all these buildings, an incredible amount of detail. It is criminal that this game does not have a photo mode. I really think it does. Uh, and a lot of it kind of reminds me with how the uh, town is laid out uh, to be like End Zone A World Apart, another post-apocalyptic survival game, which you might like to see on the channel. Uh, but that one is, uh, of course, 
uses corrugated steel and other modern materials that exist to salvage those to build a town. All right, we'll go ahead and do some hunting over there. And when this hunting cabin is up, we'll do some hunting over here. Now, the deer will be very good for us to, um, to hunt for pelts for clothing uh, and also for shoes. We can actually have the cobbler make shoes from that. We can also get animal fat from this, which will make soap for us. So we get meat, we get pelts, and we get animal fat in order to uh, then make soap eventually, clothing, and some other things. So the hunting cabin, very important rather than just basic survival. And the first few years in this game, you're going to be living off the land and even further into the game than you think. So the farms are going up now. The tree has been cleared. You can see both of the farmers now working on that. We cannot increase the number of farmers from what I can see at the moment to increase that. It's just going to take time to till that land. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, so if we go into the farmer profession, we can't add more than two, so it's just going to have to take time. So hopefully in the spring, which the land will soon freeze, uh, they can finish up that job. So they won't be able to do much for the land until later. There are also uh, buffer crops in there to replenish the soil, like clover, and there's also the ability to work the fields, so that way you can harvest rocks and other things out of there too. They can do field maintenance, which is amazing. No idea if you can do uh, plowing with cattle or oxen or whatnot or horses, but that would be a great feature in the game, the ability to work the fields with uh, plows and other different harvesting devices. That'd be great. All right, looks like we're hunting deer in two locations here. Let's push that out a little further. Great. All right, beautiful. Forger up, fisher up, two hunters up. Great. And we got our farms going up as well. We got a shortage of stone. Let's continue to tell our people to gather resources. A lot of stone can be found by the shoreline. So it sure is a good idea to do that. Beautiful. <laughs> and we can also expand our housing too, although I don't think we'll need to for a little while. Uh, immigrants can come into our town. Children can also be born in this game, so we can... Uh, have I think uh, it's uh, I think it says newborn child and adolescent there's three levels to children before they can become a working adult and you can educate them beforehand and once you build a school it also attracts other educated immigrants to move in as well so not only uh, can the children be educated but it also attracts educated adults to move into the town as well so that's pretty cool all right we got our stockyard up what do we need to upgrade our town to tier two. We need a population of 30. We need 40 wooden planks and 25 stone. So we'll work on probably making a plank building next year. A, uh, a saw pit. So we'll kind of let them continuously clear out the land and gather resources. We can take a look at the storage here. We're only like 70 out of 1500 here for uh, firewood and for uh, logs and stone. So that building has an incredible amount of storage. That's really good. So we'll let everyone continue as a uh, laborers for a little while. Could build another forger. Could have another forger go down here and clear out uh, eggs and such that are out of season, but there are nuts and such down there. So we could build a building all the way down here. Might be nice. There we go. We'll build a road there. Now, another great thing about this game, too, is one of the problems in Banished is at a certain point you would build, like, a an iron mine or something far away from your town. And this game kind of solutions that by building something known as the temporary shelter. So, in this case, your people will go home every time that there's a season change. I think it's a skill check to make sure that your people can change from summer clothes to winter clothes. So, you'll see everyone rush home for the winter. And so I think it consumes firewood to make sure that you've supplied your homes with firewood for the winter. And they also run home in the autumn and the spring in order to change from winter and summer clothes. And so the temporary shelter is a way for people to basically rest here if they're working at a far off labor camp deep in the woods rather than running all the way home. This gives them both the rest that they need in instead of running all the way home, but also you get the bonus bonus of their happiness back at home so people will be satisfied having a temporary shelter wherever they're working but then also you'll get the buff of wherever they're living so when they're at their shelter they'll be like well i got all the basic stuff that i need 
but I also have better stuff at home. So it's it gives them kind of a, a buff as well for not being at home. All right, let's go ahead and um, build ourselves a, another forager. Looks like more immigrants are moving into the town. We're now at 21 out of 24, so that's great. And uh, instead of building these buildings along the road, I think it's best for us to build off like this. So that way we can maybe put two of them there and some storage. Look at how lush this looks. For those of you who've gone hunting before, whether it's pheasant or uh, grouse or deer or whatnot, look at that. Really familiar with that kind of territory. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's incredible. I mean, I can there's not I cannot praise this game enough for how great the landscape looks. And I feel bad actually for cutting into it because some of it looks so damn beautiful. It really truly does. Really truly does. All right, we've got some. Uh, rock formations down here so we can continue mining stone for a while looks like there's probably well over 200 stone in and around this area and more fish down here too in fact two deposits of fish fantastic so we probably are better off building a smoker down here too or at least some sort of storage building for that food so uh, let's go ahead and build some more uh, fishing shacks for this love it Build a couple of shacks here and there. Kind of try to mix up the placement so it looks a little more natural. And look at that. Autumn is here. The leaves are blowing. Gorgeous. We got two fish deposits there. That's great. Man, this is great. Autumn is blowing in. The music is wonderful. Sound is wonderful. You can see the leaves now transitioning to snowflakes as we have our first winter. All right, let's order our people to build a few more homes, too. And uh, maybe we'll build... I don't think we'll build any homes up here. We'll leave this maybe for a nice park or something like that, but we will build a few more homes down this way. I think we'll get away with two more. We'll eventually build another three here, and then we can start putting service buildings here, like, for example, the school and uh, a market and whatnot. In fact, we might be able to build the market now that we finish some of the other things required. Ah, we still need the saw pit and the uh, storehouse. So the storehouse is for uh, more refined goods. Ooh, and wolves are coming. All right, so the storehouse is used to store all items. So that's a good idea to probably put that up here where we're making all sorts of different things, pelts and whatnot. Might want to build multiple storehouses, but keep in mind, this is what will be attacked by the enemy when they come our way. So we might actually want to build that closer to the center of town so that way we can defend that and uh, maybe put some towers near the middle of town. It'll also defend against thieves if our happiness drops far enough. So, uh, yeah, that's something to consider. All right, let's build a store building here. And that'll give us access to the market as soon as we also build our saw pit. Resources, there it is. Saw pit also has a negative buff on desirability, so place that far, far away. <laughs> it's not a building anybody wants to be near, but it looks very beautiful and super detailed when you look at all of the um, different types of sawdust and wood chips and things that come off there. It's just a, be it's, it's a beautiful building. Gorgeous. All right, we'll build that there. Great thing is it's next to the stockyard, so logs can be immediately gathered next door and then brought right over and then turned into logs, uh, planks rather, from the logs that can be stored. All right, more logs are needed down here. Make sure our people have orders to cut a lot of trees. They certainly do. I think everything in the town's got to go. Tree-wise. Don't want to cut too far into this forest and affect the uh, natural habitat of birds there for eggs. You want to try to ignore that as much as possible. And same with the deer up here. All right, logs will just take time to do. So I think we will survive our first winter no problem, as we have plenty of uh, firewood and storage. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the amount of firewood that we're making. It sounds crazy, but it'll uh, increase our log production by decreasing the demand. Logs will always be a constant problem, as you'll always be needing to make planks, and all businesses at all times need to be provided with firewood. So firewood is a thing that, uh, well, most of your buildings that produce uh, goods will need firewood. I don't think all of them do, but most of them do. And I believe, actually, 
I think the fishing buildings can produce their own smoked fish too, just not on as large of a scale as the smoker can. Now the smoker is starting to make smoked meat and smoked fish. And we had better, if we can, start making a root cellar to store all this food for the next year. Here's a root cellar, a partially underground structure used to store food at a reliable temperature, reducing the rate of spoilage. Inside that root cellar, we can eventually make a cooper, or basically a barrel maker, that can put barrels inside the root cellar, further increasing its storage capacity and further increasing the uh, spoil rate of food, or rather decreasing it, or increasing its shelf life. And so things, for example, like wheat grain, will last a very long time, flour will last a lot less, and bread will basically spoil very, very quickly. And uh, crops such as uh, leeks and cabbage are certainly more plentiful on the farm, but they'll spoil faster than, for example, peas and beans. So you definitely want a, di a diverse amount of food in your, in your town, so that way everyone has plenty of food. All right, I think we're going to um, build a root cellar here near the farm. I think we'll build maybe two more farms down here. We can build over the clay deposit. There is clay here, and there's plenty more on the map, so this isn't as rare of a resource as it seems. We'll build our root cellar here, so that way all the grains and things can be brought over there right away. And then the market can come here to pick it up and bring it to market so it can be distributed in the town. The market is a temporary storage area inside the town for that. And look at that! Spring has sprung. More buildings going up, multiple storage buildings, our sawmill. Gorgeous. And new villagers are immigrating. Wonderful. Glory to Raptoria and welcome. There we go. Alright, I think that's probably the maximum amount of stuff we want to cut for now. This will last us for many years. It'll take them a long time to cut all of that down. And also it'll take a long time for um, us to actually use all those materials. And in all of that time, some of these trees might grow back. So we're not doing as much damage as it seems. All right, another fishing dock ready. Go ahead and fish there. And we'll have that other fishing hut go up here somewhere as soon as we find out where that deposit is. See if we can, can explore a little bit further to the west. Nope, over here, please. Oh, I'm marking multiple areas for exploration. There we go. Got to be careful. There could be wolves out there. There could be bears. We got to be careful. If that happens, we got to get our people to run and have help come in. Luckily, all of our people are armed with knives. And uh, the hunters can actually help out too. If, for example, you have somebody near a hunter, when they get attacked, you can have them uh, run towards the hunter. And the hunter can shoot with their bow at animals uh, as they would if they were hunting. And, of course, that does a lot of damage. So they almost act like a guard in that sense. All right, a lot more wood being gathered, a lot more buildings being constructed. This is great. So right now in this downtime, we could do a lot more planning of our town. We can actually place construction sites and put them on pause. You may have seen me do that earlier with the uh, with the buildings. So we can continue to lay out the town and give orders for things. We have a storage cart, for example, that can be used to uh, store goods and transport them around. We can build that anywhere. We need planks, though, for that. Now let's go ahead and move our wagon, maybe, back here behind the sawmill. Get that out of the way. And another fishing dock is up and ready to go. There is such a thing as overfishing, so we need to be careful with that. So for now, I'm going to turn this building off until we find that other fishing source. Somewhere around here. I think it was maybe up here in this corner. Man, look at that beautiful mountainous terrain. Gorgeous. Herbs and mushrooms there. Medicinal roots. Logs, 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 though, are what is needed now the most. We'll set this work area here, though, when it's ready. And I believe the fish are up there somewhere. A little bit of a way for the fishermen to walk, for sure. For sure, but it will definitely bring in extra food. And we'll be tapping into all those resources until we build over there. If we build the building over there, if it catches on fire, it's burnt down. It's gone. So that's why I'm building it so close to the town and to the well. And there's a higher risk of fire for buildings such as the uh, sawmill. Because obviously it's just nothing but wood and wood chips sitting around. 
Who wouldn't imagine that building bursting into flame? All right, before the start of the next year, we should have our farm fields up. Look at this one, down to 24, this one at 12.28. God, look at the beautiful flowers and such. You know what's really interesting, too? These flowers aren't just for looks. When we build an apiary, which is essentially a, a beehive collector for honey and wax for candles, things like these flowers will actually matter. And we can put a beekeeper inside the town, too, because people end up uh, making a lot of flowers and such in their gardens. So they'll grow flowers and such. So it's a good idea to have an apiary inside of your uh, town, but also out in these beautiful plains areas. All right, take a look at this. This is the end-all, be-all, holy grail of farming. I can't believe they put a city builder into their awesome farming game, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we have to choose three years of crop rotation for this game. So this will indicate uh, early, early spring, where it may be too cold for most crops, and then winter, where everything will basically die off. So, we can choose to uh, do things to modify the weed level and the rockiness and the fertility of the soil, and we can also adjust this by adding clay or sand to get to that green level. So eventually, we'll need a, a sand pit or something to gather sand, and then we can bring it over here and add that to the mixture and sandy that soil up a little bit. So we'll probably put it around here. But for now, we have to deal with this level of fertility. But things can improve, and that's what's amazing. All right, so keep in mind that we can extend the crop field at any time with this button. So if we want to extend the field to uh, grow more wheat or more flax or something like that, we can actually expand the crop field. So it's a good idea not to fence things in at the start. Start small, and then continue to uh, expand as time goes on. We can also deselect crops from each year as we select them. So let's go ahead and start picking some crops to grow. So if we click here on the number one menu you can see all these different I, I, you're gonna have to take a lot of time to learn this stuff uh, or at least become familiar with it but if you're familiar from other games like I am for all my time in farming simulator which is a real-life farming simulator I know that certain crops can grow earlier or later and can be harvested at different times so uh, we also want to make sure that both of these farms are not growing the same crops at the same time for that diversity needed to get those homes to level two so in this case we're probably going to do turnips at the start because they can grow super early, and uh, that takes advantage of a lot of the year for us. So we're going to go with early crops, I think. So we'll go with uh, crops of uh, maybe beans and turnips for the first year, and then we might be able to work the field at the end of the year. Nope, we can't. So I'm trying to squeeze as much stuff into the years as I can. After that, let's do a year of maintenance and uh, growing clovers to bring fertility back to the fields, and then we'll finish up with something like, for example, peas. And then for the final year, we'll do just cabbages for year three. Cabbages are very, very hardy. I mean, this is an incredible food. The yield, the tolerance to heat and to frost, and the rockiness resilience makes it a, a, wonder, a super food to grow for this year. Obviously, you don't want to do two in the same year, but we can try it out to see how it works out. You can see the estimated yield is 211 for each year, so we'll see how that goes. So the field will have a lot of nutrients drained from it, but then we'll work the field and give it all back. So that should be fine. And crop rotation um, pulls different nutrients from the from the ground, so we'll have to see how that works out over time. I'm still experimenting, still learning, but that's the basics of that. That's incredible. I love that so much that you know it's not just drag and drop a field and that you have to buy seeds and stuff like that. Banished is cool for that, but I just love how we're kind of trusted to kind of learn things and that there's an opportunity to learn uh, and to uh, experiment with those types of things. Crops can fail uh, due to heat or frost in this game and also droughts and things like that. So keep in mind that, um, you know, even if you have the best setup, there's still a chance for failure, which is why you still want to have your forge buildings, your fu uh, fishing houses, and your uh, hunting cabins. And the farmers are great, but foragers are always a fail-safe for nature around that's always thriving on its own. And you'll be able to see the uh, weediness of the field, too. Yeah, it'll, it'll be weedy for a while, but the, will, the weed level will go down as uh, as we do this. All right, we failed to begin planting on the turnips due to the fact that it was already, uh, like, too late in the season. It, was, it wasn't, like, winter, so we couldn't grow those just yet. But that's fine. We're going to uh, grow beans next, so that'll be fine. So, yeah, we'll have beans and then peas. Some other fruits and veggies to get us started. It's going to be great. We got berries, we got fish, we got venison, and we'll have all those different types of foods coming in soon. 
Oh, looks like somebody just ab ab abandoned their stone there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, cool. Well, we've got the order to cut down a ton of trees. We still need that to be done. We still have buildings being built. Firewood is up over 120. Ideally, I think it's a good idea to have over 150 firewood just in case. A blizzard can strike, and a blizzard will increase the amount of uh, wood that your people use. It's rare, but keep in mind that's another thing that can happen. Blizzards. All sorts of natural disasters. Or I wouldn't even call that a disaster, just like a, a major weather event or something like that. It's not like your town's going to burn down from like a, a heat wave uh, in this game, but uh, it is possible at least that maybe fires would be more... Uh, Probable, that kind of thing. Yeah. I love this game so much. I love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed our first episode on New Raptoria. We'll come back for this specific city. We'll return to this one tomorrow. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you very much for leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Jump on the Discord for a giveaway. Make sure you do all those things. I want everybody to play this game. I think it's phenomenal. And I hope all of your feedback of things that you don't like or that you do love go straight to the devs so they can make a game that you think would be even better than it already is. Let me know, is this a day one game for you? Are you going to wait for a sale? Is this a game you'd like to pre-order? Is this one you want to wait off on? Or are you completely sold and you're all in? Let me know down below. I'll see you all next time. We'll be live streaming this game too, so make sure you jump in for those live streams and come ask questions live. The dev team is often in the chat as well, so plenty of questions to be answered and asked in our chat. See you all next time. Thanks for being here. You guys are awesome. Goodbye.